if everyone has these tendencies, which they certainly do, I've noticed that if I have a guest on my podcast, and I, I think my audience is fairly open minded, but then I'll have a guest on that, and they'll hate them. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, well, you can't just, even if you don't agree with them, maybe, and maybe they are wrong, but like, you can't just cancel people because they don't agree with you because you're doing exactly the same thing that the people you're complaining about. Well, you know, and also maybe your maybe your stupid opinions aren't right. They're probably not yeah. right. And like, are you so sure your life is going so much the way you want it to go? And you're such a bloody paragon of virtue and the light is shining out every orifice that everything right. you think and say is correct and everyone who disabuses you of your notions is evil. You're really so right. sure of that, are you? So, you know, you wander around and you think, God, maybe I should listen to this person because I'm such an ignorant bastard and I'm so full of malevolence and maybe they'll drop one thing on me that won't make me, like, miserable and doomed to hell and to drag everyone yes. else there, too. That's, yes. Yeah, well. You know, I, I, I felt something similar when, when I finally leaned into listening to you properly because what was interesting, even after that moment in 2018, watching that three-minute clip, deciding... This man is evil. I want nothing to do with him ever again. And of course, I didn't think I would ever have anything to do with him. Yeah, look what happened. Ha -ha. <laughs> <laughs> Infiltrated. Me, yeah. Right? Um, people in my, especially people that were not really connected to the digital world, a lot of my, uh, a lot of older men in my life, for example, and women in my life would always tell me to read your book. It's, Honestly, I people would always say to me, Africa, you will really love this book. I would have friends of mine send me lectures. I think you're really going to like this. And I, I would just completely ignore it. And in my mind, I'd be thinking, what am I, what am I going to find? What am I supposed to like? Because again, I have this idea of you built up in my head. So I'm finding it very confusing that people that know me very well are telling me that there's something that I'm going to like, right? Yeah, what the Very hell? confusing. But again, for years, what the hell? For years, I ignored it. So when I started watching your lectures late 2019 and last summer as well, in the beginning, I could notice myself listening to you and finding, waiting for a moment where I could say, aha, mm -hmm, see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? Right. I, I, I knew I was right. And you know what? I waited. I wait, that moment never came. That moment okay. never came. That and comes that for also, me right? all the time. <laughs> really. <laughs> and that again, so it, it's like there wasn't one moment of being awake and then it's done. So many little, tiny, seemingly insignificant moments where I'm just sitting here by my sofa, just watching and listening, observing myself, waiting, you know, for that confirmation that I'm right. Mm -hmm. And then it never coming. And then I have to deal with that. And then, I, so again, my curiosity, I finally allowed myself to be curious again. And now, Jordan, I can say you have been one of the most influential people to me for so many reasons, reasons I couldn't even mention right now. Um, but to be able to have the conversations that I do now publicly, you have, and I, I, I could have never never imagined this ever in my entire life this is things like this don't just happen You're and the fact that i up, can man. tell you this <laughs> oh no <laughs> thank you just thank you thank you you got him <laughs> it's a pleasure it's a rough pleasure, but mm -hmm. I know. You know, did you knew what happened to me with uh, Marvel Comics? <sighs> yeah, that was something. It's really something to see yourself portrayed. You know, I got accused of being a Nazi pretty much when all this happened. It was really something because I had been teaching students. What we're talking about today, about these temptations that you faced and how people, you know, as individuals, get sucked into that totalitarian hell, you know, and then, so that was something for that to happen, such a reversal, and then to have that comic mm -hmm. book come out, well, it was surreal, 
it was absolutely mm. surreal to be portrayed because <laughs> Nazi wasn't enough, right? We had to go right for the archetype itself. So I think we've raised about $400,000 for charity now on the basis mm. of that. So that was a fun reversal. But it was really shocking mm. when I first saw that. I, I just couldn't believe it. I was very ill at the time too. And I thought, this can't be real. This has to be Photoshop. This cannot possibly mm. be happening. It's so right. completely beyond comprehension. And, you know, to come from the pen of one of the foremost black intellectuals, and I, mm. I use the racial category only because that's the categories that he's using yes. to operate within. Yeah. You know, so... So life is really weird. That, this is true. Right. This is right. true, as, as this whole conversation <laughs> illustrates. So, mm -hmm. so what have been the personal consequences for you of writing this letter and, and having it go? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. have you have have you been pilloried? Has, have, what's what's happened to you? Um, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't received. And this this is something that I don't think about so much actually because I, I prefer to just allow it to be whatever it is right now to not expect it or to, it, it just is but I actually have not received any pushback from this and for it to have been read by over four million people and for me to not have been aggressively dragged through the streets of social media you know by my neck it's why not? Why hasn't it happened? Why do you think? What, what's, what's operating to protect you, do you think? You know what? I, it would be very naive of me to think that my identity markers, the ones we've been speaking about, don't have anything to do with that. I think people are more willing to listen to what I'm saying because of the fact that I'm Black. If I had been white, for example, a lot of what I'm saying, the more universal things that are not specific to me being Black or Zimbabwean, um, they would have just been dismissed because there are many things people have been saying over the past years that are just common sense. They make sense. People have genuine questions, but no one will listen to it because the first thing they will see is that you inhabit a white body, so you don't get to speak, you know? So I think people are more willing um, to hear what I have to say because of that. And I think it's also because I'm not preaching to anyone. Mm -hmm, I'm not mm -hmm, telling mm -hmm, anyone what mm -hmm, to do. Yeah. That's a, yep, right? Yep, I'm, yep. right? I, I'm not an academic. I'm not trying to give you data. And it, this is not about that. This is a very personal account from someone that has been in it. I'm not righteous. I'm not above you or below you. Right. This is just me mm -hmm. saying, hey, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm opting out of this game and we all get to opt out, you know, and I, I, I think that's why it has been received very well, because I'm speaking from the eye. I'm speaking from my own right. personal experience. Right. And I think it can be very hard to dispute that. Or well, you can't. Well, there, you see, there's something interesting about that, too, eh? because one of the mantras of, of the left I hate to use these categories, but we're we're stuck with it at the moment. Yes, is, yes, yes. You know the 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 uh, implicit truth of subjectivity, and the thing Lived is, there's there, yes, right? but, and the thing is, there's something right about that, because mm -hmm. you are there is a domain of knowledge that you have privileged access to that no one can dispute, and that domain of knowledge is your honest representation of your subjective experience and that it does have the kind of power that you just described mm. and so there is there's some sense in noting that as a form of truth but then it, it the claim seems to have got twisted and perverted in some way which which is it, it kind of gets elevated narcissistically it's like because i have this domain where i'm i am the only person who has access to those experiences then all of a sudden that gets in, it gets inflated in this political way into mm. a narcissistic claim that you know that means overall my truths are as good as any truth and they're as good as anyone else's and there's an error there right because there's despite the fact that there are things that you can say that only you can say that no one can dispute 
There are all sorts of things that you can't say, that you don't know, and that are absolutely subject to dispute. Yes. And so it's, 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 the, it's the narcissistic inflation of the claim beyond its reasonable boundaries. And then your conscience, I think, was operating in you to say, well, where are the boundaries of this claim? Like, the, yeah. the, the, let's take the war, so to speak, between black people and the and police in the United States. Well, obviously that's a problem, but it's a really, really complex yeah. problem. And maybe we want to have an instant solution to it, but we don't have an instant solution to it. And so yeah. the claim is, well, this is a problem. And then the next claim is, well, it's based in racism. And then the next claim is it's based in white supremacy. It's like, well, wait a second, there's a problem here. And the problem with coming up with a solution so rapidly is, well, you don't know. You actually don't know. This is actually a really complicated problem. And your intuition that it's a problem is, is dead on. And your intuition that it would be reasonably mor reasonable morally to be concerned about that is dead on. But the right approach is questioning, not answering. And I think part of the reason that I've got away with my lectures online, I think, maybe, and as a professor, for that matter, is I do my best to always question. And even in my public lectures that on the tour, I usually think of a question that I'm trying to answer. And then when I go out and lecture, I'm, I'm trying to explore the question. I'm not telling the audience yes. what they should think. I don't know what they should think. I don't even know what yes. I should think. And so I can guide them through the process of exploration. And, and that, oh. that seems to, well, so far that seems to be working. And, that's what yes. we're doing in this conversation, and that's partly what right. makes it a good conversation, you know, is we're trying to figure something out that we don't know.